Am I on? There we are. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you for returning the greeting and the blessing. A couple of announcements this morning. Uh, next Sunday, there will be the congregational meeting here in the church immediately following the service. And I think you've received information regarding that. So that's next Sunday, and there will be no Bible study next Sunday. Today we'll have Bible study, and then the next two Sundays, uh, last two Sundays of the month, we'll have a Bible study on Micah. Right? Glad everybody's here, both those of us here in person and also those out there in Cyberland. <laughs> <laughs> so let's join, the, join together in the opening hymn, Christ is Our Cornerstone. It's one of those you just can't sit if you're able to stand. So let's stand, those who are able. Christ is Our Cornerstone. We are gathered to hear God's word and to call upon him in prayer and praise. In the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thoughts, words, and deeds, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Glory to God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, 
Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. Spirit alone, our Lord most high, in God the Father glory, amen, our glad reply. Let us pray. O Lord, we put family to sleep, continuing to receive Christmas, that in line with the hope of your heavenly glory, we may ever be by your mighty power, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, 
he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Holy 
words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we're gathered here and as we just finished the readings, what's in those readings? What's in those readings is grace and mercy and peace to all of you from God our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, who is our risen and ascended Lord and Savior. Amen. Our text today is not tax, text today. Taxes are coming up. <laughs> but our text today is uh, uh, the reading from Isaiah. And from that reading, we have the banners that, uh, that are so prominently displayed. Holy, 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 here am I, send me. And as we as churches struggle over, well, let's, let's put together a, a mission statement. Isaiah hit it right on the head. The angels and Isaiah. A song of praise, and here am I, send me. Take me, Lord, send me out. Send me out to be one of your children in this this wild and crazy world we live in. Some, sometimes you think, uh, you know, it comes a time for congregations to elect uh, leaders and stuff like that, and other organizations, and you hear that, well, if, uh, if, if you put my name in a ballot, no, 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 and if I'm elected, I won't serve. Now, how many of you heard po politicians say that? <laughs> but so many times we feel like, you know, I can't do it. Or, I don't want to take the heat for doing it. Am I really qualified for this? I don't want to be the one responsible. This is an overwhelming task for me. And in today's reading, we have two men. They're confronted with just that. And that's going through their heads too. Crumbling to the floor of the temple. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm not worthy to be here. And Lord, get away from me. Depart from me. I'm a sinner. And notice that God did not mess around or wait around and pulling them back up and saying, hey, let's get going here. Each one was humbled, realized he did not deserve to be in God's presence. But they were. God had them there for the reasons he wanted them there. As, as we read through scripture, all the other people. You know, think about Noah. Hey, Noah, build me this, uh, this, uh, this boat that's bigger than this church. Just this big box float around him. God's people answered the calls given to them. Let's take a look at Isaiah here. And as we take a look at Isaiah, we also, each one of us, takes a look at ourselves. Now this month, as I mentioned, the Bible studies on Micah, and Micah and Isaiah were, were at the same time, and they were based out of Judea and out of the Jerusalem area. Isaiah lived and was principally in Jerusalem. Micah was out in the area around it, but was speaking to the people in there as well. And so those messages coincide with each other, and they address the same issues amongst the people and amongst the leaders of the church at that time. And as we study what they're, what they're calling out of the people there, and the social and the political things that are going on, They could be here. They could be in Springfield. They could be in Washington, D.C. They could be in Geneva, Switzerland. They could be calling out to people and governments everywhere. You know, Yogi Berra had a saying, deja vu, all over again. And as we go through our years and go through the eras of different things that happen in the world, how many of us go, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of seeing this happen again and again and again. 
How do we as Christians, how do we live God's pleasing lives and speak of God and, and his word in this society today? Know how the, uh, the account in Isaiah begins, the year that Uzziah died. We have a couple other points in Scripture. You know, a lot of the books in the Bible give points, or in them are different things, and we can go down and we can ascertain exactly when this was, right down to the year. And this is one of them. Another one we know very well is something about a guy named Augustus being, uh, being Caesar at that time. And more specific, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And even more specific, issued for everybody to reject issued for a tax. And we go through and we keep finding all these uh, evidences and stuff. And there are lots of evidences about when Uzziah was king that are outside of Scripture that archaeologists have found. And so that setting and knowing about Uzziah and it's the year that Uzziah died now we can start to understand what Isaiah said. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst a people of unclean lips. It wasn't just sin in general. Yes, it was sin in general, but it was very specific in that during Uzziah's reign, although he started out as a very faithful leader, and he led Israel to its most, most prosperous and militarily its most powerful time since Solomon. And ever since. But his ego got the better of him. He was, he was so good and his, so powerful in his, in his kingship there. He was pretty brazen. He went into the temple one day and says, I am going to burn the incense. I. I've earned it. I've got it done. And we know that it's only the priests that God called upon and gave the orders from Aaron on down to burn the incense. Confession for the people. Make, make prayers for atonement. And announce that atonement. No, Uzziah, I'm the leader. I'm going to do it. And as he's attempting to do it, there's an earthquake. The temple cracks open and a light shines down exactly on him. And immediately he's covered with leprosy. And he lives the rest of his life in quarantine. And his son, Jotham, uh, they reign together during the next 12 years or whatever it is that he lives. But he can't be a very active king. Uh, the good news following that is uh, when he dies, Jotham takes over full time the realm. And he was a very faithful king again, too. But during that time of Uzziah, in the prosperity of the land, and the power that the people had, and they negotiated different treaties one way or the other with the Egyptians, with the Assyrians, and back and forth. And people themselves got pretty haughty about things. And in their lives, they were living lavish lives, and those that had looked down on those who had not. And the leaders were uh, forcing people to sell them their homes and their different things. They were trampling on the not so wealthy people, the people that weren't on the in crowd. It's pretty cruel. And we see things like that in our lives today, the, the different things that we hold against people, trying to, trying to obstruct people from doing the things that they're, they're entitled to do. And then the people, too, were worshiping false gods. They were falling into the sins of uh, Samaria at the time. And yet they still kept coming back to the temple for the special, special events. And it's more like an, an entitlement to their religion that wasn't faith anymore. Entitlement. I'm a Judean. I, I, I'm okay. I'm saved. Now I can go out and do whatever I want. Something we hear once in a while too. I went to church Sunday. Now I can go out and do whatever I want. I can hide my, my faith. 
And that's how they were. They were very open about it, wrapped up. And even among the priests like Isaiah, and through the prophets, there were, there were lots of prophets in the different communities. Remember Elijah and Elisha? As he went from town to town, there were a group of prophets came out of each town. Well, the prophets were silent during those last years of Uzziah. The word of God wasn't coming across, and they weren't proclaiming it. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm not doing with my lips what I should be doing, what God has called me here to do. And then what happens? Well, we have seraphim here. We also know there are cherubim. Cherubim are the ones who stand in God's presence and glorify him. And we see them on either side of the Ark of the Covenant. The seraphim were more like warriors. They were fiery guys. Anyway, I'm a man of unclean lips. The seraphim picks up a coal and touches his lips with that burning coal. Not many of us experience it in our lifetime, but we've probably seen it in old Western movies and movies about Daniel Boone and stuff. Someone gets a cut and, and, and a wound out in the woods and stuff. What do they do? They put a burning coal on it to cauterize it, to seal that wound and begin the healing process. And that's what that is. is God touched those broken, and sinful and, and, uh, and lips sealed them with his word, with his power. And what does he say? I need someone to go out. And what does Isaiah say? We can say it together from the banner. Here am I. Twice he said. Here am I. Send me. Send me. The answer pretty confident. We're confident, as we know the history from Jesus' birth on, many of the Old Testament things, but the basic things from it. We're familiar with, with Isaiah's prophecies. And in these prophecies, Isaiah is prophesying about really about three different things. One is about what's going to happen in this, this community, this, this uh, Judean nation and in Jerusalem. What's going to happen in the short come? What's going to happen years from now? What's going to happen when God's Son comes? And from Isaiah, we have some very, very well-known passages. Uh, how many remember how many of those passages we read at Christmas time? A virgin will conceive. And how many remember some of those passages we read during Lent and, and Good Friday? The suffering servant. And by his wounds, we are healed. And then there's a third level of prophecy when Christ comes again at the end time. And some of them are very deliberate for each step along the way. Some of them we can look at it and say, they say they hit every part. And that's what Isaiah was sent out to do. But the first part was Jesus' first words after his baptism. He came back from the days in the wilderness. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Repent. Look at yourself. Look at your sins. And then look at God. Say, Lord, I really did mess up. And we can look at the cross. We can look up at God. We can come on our knees, bow our heads. Either way, but we can call upon him confidently knowing that he loves you and he forgives you in Jesus Christ. Something about breaking the mountains down and raising the valleys so the pathway is straight. Confession is that. Repentance is that. Getting all that stuff out of the way and so that we're not distracted by all of the things, whether things going on around us or things in our memories. We can't get out of our memories that bog us down. That's called guilt. Satan's favorite toy is guilt. It makes you feel unworthy. Well, yes, we're unworthy, but God says, I am making we've read a couple times this person and that person had favor with God. He had favor on Mary. No one. He has favor on you. We have that in our benediction. He loves you. He wants you. He's made you to be his own.
And that's his favor. He wants you to come. I'm sure we're broken down with our repentant hearts, but we're also confident in them because God has said, yes, I forgive you. And that's what the angel said to Isaiah now. Your guilt is taken away. Isaiah, your guilt is taken away. Arian Rose, your guilt is taken away. Each one of you, put your name there. You are forgiven. And that's the important message here. And that's the message Isaiah was sent out to preach. Faith is knowing. Well, first of all, repentance is, is uh, painful. Uh, some of you have been here when I baptized a little baby, and a lot of times when the, when the preacher gets to hold the baby to baptize him, what does the baby do? And I've looked up a few times and said, yeah, it sure does hurt to get rid of those sins. That's a hurting thing. To confess and to put our egos aside, put our self-centeredness aside, set our thinking it's our ability to do things aside. That's painful. Put that at the base of the cross and to look to God for his forgiveness there. Repentance is faith, knowing that God Christ loves and has worked that forgiveness of sins for you. Jesus forgives you. God the Father forgives you. The Holy Spirit works that miracle of forgiveness in your hearts. Christ loved and forgives you even when we were sinners first. Faith is believing that God has placed our sins behind his back. He doesn't want to see them anymore. He, he gets rid of them from you. That's how far away, from how far east is from the west, so far has he taken your sins away from you. And faith is knowing that although our sins are as, as crimson, they're, they're whiter than snow, although they're scarlet, they should be washed Today, we can come before God confidently. We can come boldly because we know he's on our side. And we can joyfully sing praises as the angels were singing that day. You know, Isaiah got a, a glimpse of what eternity in heaven is in. Singing praises to God without stop. We come here today because we know that Jesus makes us lie down in green and comfortable pastures. He lays us beside bills still waters that refresh us, not wash us away. That depiction of his heavenly home. And we rejoice that he restores us. He leads us in righteousness. Not so that we can say, I did it, but he leads us in that righteousness. Why? For his name's sake so that others see that righteousness. They see God's love in you. Here am I, send me. That one hymn, I, don't, I, I, I can't preach like Paul, but I can tell the love of Jesus. When someone talks about what keeps you going in life, I know that God loves me, and that Jesus died for me. I believe. I don't have to argue to convince you. Statement. I believe. This is what I know. And as with Isaiah and Peter, God has called and He's made you to be His dear child, His messenger, and to live thanking and praising Him in this world we live in. And He calls you to do that all to His glory. In Jesus' undying love. Amen. In this peace that does pass beyond all of our people understanding, it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's rise as together we confess that saving faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one word, Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of His Father before all the world, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one 
substance of the Father, I whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made a man and was crucified also for us on the conscious heart. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We remember those who are listed in the bulletin, and we've had this step on the, on the screen as well. Uh, Pastor Davis is uh, going to have surgery tomorrow. It's a, a corrective surgery, and he's supposed to be in the hospital for three to five days. And we anticipate and we trust God for full recovery for him. As we include in our, our petitions today. Davis, Pastor Davis, Eric Baca, Bill 
Sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't. That's how it is in this world, isn't it? We're all right. Through it all. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way. The Lord be with all of you.